Well, it's Monday again, is it? Or is it Friday? It is Pat? indeed. Clear, clarify oh, that. Sure, sure, what day of the week is it? It is Monday and it's a ah, bank holiday God. here. So I get very confused about exactly. No, you, <laughs> you had your Jubilee celebrations. Oh, today. yes, no, that's right. I should remember yeah, that. We, 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 didn't, we didn't have those, but we have a bank yeah. holiday today. Well, if you'd had those, that would have guided you as to what day of the week it was. Yes. Um, I, even with that guidance, I was unsure. Anyway, yeah. let's have a chat about uh, not the, well, I suppose you could talk, or could talk about the uh, Platinum Jubilee celebrations. Did you watch that concert, by the way? In, uh, I was watching I was watching part of it. Uh, what do you think? I, I thought Rod Stewart should pack it in. <laughs> <laughs> the very first thought came into my own mind. Oh, I said, Murray, I said, that, that his voice is gone, you know. You know well, he started off, Jude, I'm not an expert in music, but even I could tell that he started off out of tune. Oh, uh, I think he was behind the music and his voice has definitely gone. Yeah. Now, uh, somebody said he is only recovering for, from COVID. I don't know if that's true or not, but yeah. what well, I guess the old Rod Stewart would have wowed them. This oh, Rod yeah, Stewart certainly yeah. didn't. Big time. I, there was talk at one stage of um, Paul McCartney being on, Sir Paul McCartney. Oh, uh, the last time he was on, I think was on. A, I saw him. Was it in Free Nelson Mandela or something? You know, or Nelson Mandela celebration? Yeah, and he was beyond woeful. He's gone as well. That's right. Dude, that's I went right. to see uh, Gordon Lightfoot. I love Gordon. You know the Canadian singer yes, Gordon Lightfoot. Yeah, of course. When yeah. I was a young fellow, he was me absolute go-to. Uh, if I was stuck somewhere, I would just sit and listen to Gordon Lightfoot. Oh, beautiful songs, him. beautiful stuff. I went to see him in the what they call it, the Waterfront Hall in Belfast, about four or five years ago. Yeah. No, see when you reach a certain age. Every song sounded the same because he could neither go up nor down. Oh god! So, and uh, but he, and they know the rich timbre that he used to have in his voice. Yeah, it's gone yeah, totally. Yeah. Like it was every song was just meaningless. Pat, a terrible thought has just come into my mind. Would the same thing apply to people talking to each other on the internet? No, I don't. I don't think so. No, look, <laughs> uh, but, oh, look, look at Tom Jones. Tom Jones is still fabulous. Uh, Tom Jones is, yeah. go, goes on, and I heard somebody the other day. I thought a great age, and their voice was absolutely impeccable. Well, I suppose so the, the the king of those who all would be Leonard Cohen. Yeah, absolutely. He really only came into his own in his early eighties. Yeah, hey, I mean, hallelujah, he, and what he'd I, been yeah. writing for a long time. Like he started as a poet. I remember teaching him as a poet in yeah. class in Canada. Yeah, uh, and then he, he branched into getting a bit of music behind him. And yeah, the rest the way he went. Rest yeah. of history. Anyway, come back to um, the topic or some of the topics we actually had planned to talk about. And the first and most obvious one is that video, that yeah. video, which was taken apparently in an orange hall and which has excited a huge amount of comment and uh, controversy. What's your own reaction to it, Pat? Dude, uh, you know something? I actually write a column for the Daily Mirror, the Northern uh, Occupied Country, or our part of our country situation. Yeah. And I, and I said that about five questions. I know I used to have an old mentor. He said, Pat, you should, journalists shouldn't ask questions. They sh they're there to answer them. But I asked, why did somebody sing this song? Why did somebody write it? What, you know, what was the motivation for it? You know, and Jude, what, what was the whole thing about in regard to... This woman was not a public figure, uh, uh, Michaela McAreevy. She wasn't into politics. All she was was the daughter of um, Mickey Hart. And to somebody to write an absolutely vile song about her death for no apparent reason other than she was um, Mickey Hart's daughter, dude, I, I thought I couldn't, and I'm saying this about this, I thought I couldn't be shocked. I was actually shocked. The, the level of hatred involved in that, dude, there used to be one thing in Ireland, respect for the dead, you know, that you didn't, you know, uh, besmirch the dead. But when you use a, a dead, particularly a young, innocent woman on her honeymoon for a vile song, you sort of go, Jesus, where are we as a society, Hedda? Hmm. I, I will say I, I answered that question about being shocked as well. And I didn't, I wasn't shocked. It didn't shock me. Uh, uh, it saddened me and it kind of disgusted me, but it didn't shock me. Um, yeah. The fact is, you said about writing it. I don't think that song was ever written. I think it's like, you know, football chants. Uh, it sort of grows and then it's everybody knows it and they're singing. Well, it that's, a, that's a punch. You'd, everybody knows it. Uh, uh, the wee bit, and I only watched the wee bit of the video. I turned it off. But it was quite clear. There were people singing, uh, as somebody said, with glee and gusto. They Listen, knew the words of it. It yeah, wasn't the first you, airing. Did you see, Did you You saw the actual video? Because I, I just I uh, saw... we, just a wee bit, Jude, I turned it off. I said, I'm not watching this. Uh, I found it difficult to find it. I, I yeah. saw these. No, I was taking off air very, 
Do you know, I, I think shortly after we finished on Friday, I got some note from somebody I can't even remember now who saying, "Look at this video," and mm -hmm. and it was there, but it disappeared very quickly afterwards. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I did. You get a chance to see the third. I had, or turned it on. Did it turned it on for a couple of seconds? That was it. Mm. I watched the whole thing. Well, it was only thirty seconds anyway. Um, I suppose a couple of things strike me. As I say, it wasn't a surprise for me, and it wasn't a surprise for me where it apparently took place in an orange hall. Apparently, um, Donald Orange well, Hall. So they say, but that, I mean that that doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, I suppose I, I tend. I imagine the guys who sang that. And I imagine the people who were there uh, pounding the table and so on uh, in time to the singing, um, they would view that as black humor. Because uh, now I saw Alison, what's her name from the Irish? Oh, Alice O'Connor? Uh, no, no, Alison. Morris. 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 Uh, Morris. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Alison Morris was on from the Belfast Telegraph, was on, um, was it, was it uh, with Carruthers? Uh, uh, the, uh, he, the, the, said, the politics program. She said there was uh, the the full video showed you them singing about uh, the Loch Gall. Uh, you know, remember the IRA guys were IRA guys uh, were killed, uh, and they sang about Rosemary Nelson. Um, yeah. Now I was quite. I mean, that sort of took me aback a wee bit. I'm not surprised they sang about Loch Gall, but I thought Rosemary Nelson was a bit disgusting. Um, I'm glad, however, that they focus simply on Michael Lane, or not Michael Lane, but um, Michael Michaela, Michaela, uh, Michaela Hart, uh, because she, as you say, is totally, there's no politics in it at all. She taught Irish no. as a secondary yeah. school teacher, and yeah. her father was a trainer. Of the, I mean, did they hate the GAA? And I heard yeah. efforts, you know, in some of the discussion programs I've listened to, there were efforts to do equations between the yeah. GAA. Somebody yeah. said, oh, well, uh, they're calling... Why don't the GAA stop naming their grounds after dead IRA men? Yeah. Um, I, 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 that that just didn't wash with me. And I no, but was, you, that is totally false equivalency. Exactly. Like when it, there, there, there was a war on in Ireland. You know, they go across England, you'll find grounds named after so, British soldiers. You'll see statues to them. Whether the uh, unionists agree or disagree, the, 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 the community from which them, those guys came regarded them as freedom fighters. Whether you agree or disagree is a total irrelevance. Yeah. But uh, you won't find, not to my knowledge, I have never heard nor heard of any Catholics or, you know, GA people singing about the murder of innocent yeah, right. Protestant girls. Yeah, right. Never, I ever. I agree with that. I agree with that completely. So are we to conclude then that, like Mary McAleese said some time ago, a long time ago, and was castigated for it, she said something about the fact that uh, unionists the way they brought up their children was to detest Catholics, and she compared it with the with uh, Nazi Germany and the Jews. Do you uh, remember that? I remember uh, again, but remember uh, there was a, before that. I think Cardinal Lafee, remember he said uh, um, the nationalist politician would sort of detest you for your politics. Hmm. The Protestant population of the unions would detest you for your religion. Mm. You know, uh, so there seems to be some sort of, Jude, I, I don't get it. Well, I, and, uh, by the way, by the way, one thing you said, I'm going to, you said they, these people were regarded this as black humor. Jude, yeah. that is that, not at all, Jude, that, that is not black humor. That is actually think, disgusting. And it's not think, humor. But you don't think that they see it as black humor? No, I don't. I think they see it as sectarian hatred. I don't think for a second. Oh, it's, well, there's a lot what's, of laughter what's, what's, now. So well, I, there, I, I, Jude, it's what's, what's humor's? About singing about uh, I you know, agree and with you. Time I, I agree say. with you. I don't yeah. see it as simply black humor, but I say they. No, no, I know you don't. That. But you, you know, but you were explaining their position as seeing it as black humor. I don't buy that for a second. You don't think so? Not uh, at all. Not I, at I, all. I, I think they probably. I think it's downright it. sectarianism. Oh well, I mean, there could have been a bit of sectarianism in there too. Um, is it overstated? Did Mary McAleese back to Mary, 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 Mary McAleese again? Did she overstate things when she said that unionists or, or Protestant? Or taught. I, would, I, do I, think I think that's a, a, I think that's a bit blanket. Like there's many, many, and I know them, uh, very, very decent unionist exactly. Protestants who will totally, completely, uh, and utterly con condemn uh, mm. what happened and w uh, don't want to be associated with. It. So I am not going to throw a blanket uh, bland out, and, you uh, know. But there are there is a rump. There is a certain section, you know. Uh, Joe Brawley had made the point that he says, you "No, know, uh, remember." Uh, like Mervyn Gibson says, no surrender. Uh, Jim Allister has been pointing this thing about, you know, uh, the Northern Ireland's stake. Joe Bradley said about um, Arlene Foster referring to people as the enemy. 
uh, uh, Jeffrey Donaldson said, that we defied our enemies in the past and we'll, we'll defy them again. So the enemies are now the Catholic population. Yeah. Well, just to come back very briefly to the, the video and then we'll move on to the next thing. Um, I watched the video and what I saw were two main men doing the singing. Uh, yeah. And there was sort of people banging the table in time to it. And they were thrusting their arms in the air the way yeah. a football crowd might. Um, and there were some who were just sitting there now, it seemed to me. They weren't doing either of the two. No, they weren't singing yeah, I saw that. Or Dude, I only their... watch it for 10 seconds. I said, I'm uh, not getting into this. I'm, so I, I, just, I just thought, you know, it would be wrong, I think, to uh, condemn all equally. Now, maybe the people who were just sitting there should have got up and left or should have said well, something. Well, no, Jude, when you're another crowd, have, you, have you ever watched studies about crowd behaviour? Yeah. You, 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 most people, uh, when they're in a situation like that, they're like a, a sort of like a cattle corral. You don't want to get up and walk out. But right, the, right. The, the fact that they didn't take part is yeah. fair enough. Yeah, I, but, but there was a, a fair, fair number of them were clapping and laughing yeah. and, and, you know, in unison with these two guys. Yeah. But there were some. It's hard to tell because the, their backs were to the camera. Uh, right. And that made it difficult to tell. Yeah, here, I'll ask you, you a question. I'll put it the other way. Do you think they only apologized and all the, uh, you know, this sort of thing is now because they were caught? <laughs> would, uh, would, would, would they have carried on and, uh, uh, and all uh, enjoyed it? Had they do, not you need a, do you need to ask that question? <laughs> uh, uh, do you know me? I, I, you know, I ask, it, I ask it in all of this. You, you think these guys were going to sing this and then they were going to say, come out and say, oh, I was a bit pissed there. Uh, I want to tell the press now I was singing a sectarian song yeah. and, uh, you know, it was just the booze that was talking. Not, By the way, Jude, not this, 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 <laughs> not Jude, I knew that's going to be on. This morning, a guy made a point to me. He says, Japers, he says, Pat, he says, it was not unbelievable. He says, talk about an own goal by, he says, mm -hmm. unionism and loyalism. And he says, but the same weekend, he says, the, uh, he says, Sinn Féin were generous enough, and he says, I mean generous enough, to send good wishes to the Queen, uh, Michelle O'Neill, on her 70, you know. He says, mm. a magnanimity, he says, you know, it'll play well in Britain, it'll play well in various other places. Contrast that, he says, with the sort of, you know, um, the, the video, uh, the McAreevy video. And he says, a totally subsumed, dominated mm. the uh, Jubilee celebrations, the mm. Platinum mm. Jubilee celebration. Yeah. The yeah. main item on most of the news coverage in the North uh, over the weekend and in the uh, Republic was this video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think it was certainly an old goal. Um, maybe just, maybe unionists are perhaps just clumsier, you know? I mean, you must surely have been uh, in the presence of some nationalists or republicans who must have talked in sectarian terms, no? Never, never, Pat? I've, I've, I've heard, just, of course I've heard, um, but you know, it's not a, a way of life. And I, like I was in the company one time of a person who made uh, um, a sectarian remark, uh, and Martin McGuinness was there, and Martin went for him big time, mm -hmm. you know, along the lines, hey, wait a minute, that's not what we're about, and so on. Uh, you know, uh, so I and I, I have now I've never heard anybody sectarian, you know, Protestants for Protestant sticks, you know, that sort of stuff. But I've heard a lot of stuff about politics, you know, about the sectarian state, about the bigotry and the discrimination yeah. and the hatred for all that. Mm -hmm. And to, but I regard that as politics, and I regard that as legitimate. Yeah, I was actually, I have been sort of doing devil's advocate there. It was a totally disgusting bloody thing. And uh, I'm delighted that they were caught and no yeah. amount of, I mean, there was something so mealy-mouthed about saying, yeah. uh, well, it was uh, fueled by alcohol. Not that we're offering that as an excuse. Well, yeah. they just have offered it. By the way, you dare see, I think this is a throwaway line too. I read the apology to my with JBW or JWB. Oh, you know who that is? I uh, know, yeah. But here's the point. There's about two or three. I regard that as actually adding insult to injury. It was done obviously by Jimmy Bryson mm -hmm. by a company that apparently that was either folded about two years ago but doesn't exist anymore. Oh, I didn't. Know that's that. allegedly the case. I don't know whether it is oh. true, but you know, like these guys were getting Jimmy Bryson to us. Why didn't they go to a, a proper PR company or they went to a loyalist who's as not exactly. You know, no one for his charitable views to, on the mm. nationalist community, is he? I, I think they probably panicked. I think they probably panicked. And uh, yeah. the first person that they thought could put a few words together, yeah. uh, you know, uh, tell them what to do, they, yeah. they, they grabbed it. Anyway, anyway, let's draw a veil over that sad, yeah. sad uh, occasion. Uh, let's talk about another um, item That's that involves of... flags, <laughs> not like a flag, yeah. um, where the tricolor was shown. 
at the Platinum Jubilee celebrations. A uh, concert. And, and it should have been the Ulster flag. Yeah. And it was, <laughs> I uh, what do you make of that? I, no, was that a Freudian slip? I, should, I, I think I, the BBC has apologised for it. But you'd look, let me tell you something. If I was a unionist, there's so many things going on this last while. You sort of wonder, when is a penny going to drop? They don't even come on the radar for the BBC. Do you think for a minute that the BBC would have got the flag of Scotland wrong? Do you think for a minute they would have got the flag of Wales wrong? But they put up the trickler for Northern Ireland, a so-called integral part of the United Kingdom. Do you sort of go, wait a minute. Um, and I heard somebody on this morning saying that... Uh, uh, no, we're we'll probably be coming on to Bojo and his pr problems, you know, uh, seeing the vote of confidence is going yeah. to be taking place later today. But they said the DUP has got absolutely chinned by uh, the, 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 the Tory party, yet they're still sort of hanging on to Bo Bojo's coattails. Did you go to say, got yourself one stage and the back in the good old days, the unionists were speaking from a, a position of strength. Jude, they are no longer speaking from a position of strength. That is factually correct. It seems almost as if there's a sort of a curse following them, you know, bad yeah. things seem to just keep on happening one after the other, a bit, a bit like Boris Johnson himself, actually. Um, you know, of course, you can't eat a flag, you know that, Pat? Uh, John, you used to tell me You can't eat a flag. Yeah. You can't eat a flag, but it does matter if it's a union one that's missing. Yeah, <laughs> or, but you know, how do you laugh, you know, and I thought to myself when I saw it, I actually saw it on Saturday night, uh, it was your man, the comedian, on, and he was, he was chatting about uh, the thistle and the shamrock and someone else, and the next thing I saw the trickler in the background, <laughs> and I started to laugh, I thought, Jesus, somebody's really messed that up, so, and but you know, that, that thought occurred to me, Eve, just as that happened, how insignificant must you feel as a union, unionist, if they even put up the wrong flag, the flag of, the flag of your enemy? Maybe that was just a junior person who might have uh, screwed up, you know. I, I, or it could have been a senior person making that point. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it reminds me of a joke, which I'm going to tell you, and I'll tell you the punchline after, uh, about Freudian slips. Uh, uh, this guy said, uh, what is this thing about Freudian slips? I don't understand. So the guy explained that, uh, you know, that um, what, what happens is you're, you mean to say one thing, and something quite different come, comes comes out. out because it's in your subconscious. Uh, so this guy said met this guy uh, later on, uh, a couple of days later, and he said, "Oh, could you know what you said about that about that one thing and thing?" Uh, uh, he said, "I I experienced that the other morning. I was I was having breakfast with my with my wife, and I I meant to say, uh, please pass the marmalade, darling, and I said, I'll tell you the rest after Pat. I know I knew I feared that one." That's how you, you, and yeah. Uh, Have you heard that one? I've heard of that. Oh, Absolutely. That's a point. That's a point. Coldstein, Newcastle. Coldstein, Newcastle. Okay, let's go on to Boris um, yeah. and the booing of Boris. Uh, I, I once had a book of short stories called Booing the Bishop, but this is I remember booing reading Boris. This. Yeah, booing yeah. the Boris. Um, has he, see, I've always maintained he's a vote winner. Uh, uh, now he's beginning to look as if, well, he's going to be, you know, there's a contest as to whether or not yeah. he should stay on or a vote. Um, uh, do you think the gas has gone out of Boris, so to speak? Dude, I think he'll won tonight. Yeah. Uh, the vote. In fact, I'm pretty certain he'll won it pretty comfortably, but yeah. it's how comfortably he wins it. You know, Jude, yeah, what is it, 54? They have to get 54. Aye. 54 Aye. MPs have signed. Now, how many more will secret and a, and a secret ballot go against him? They, his big, uh, um, what would you say, plus is there's no obvious successor. Correct. Richie Sunak has uh, uh, solid his pants. As well, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what do you, um, trust as a, a lightweight? No, who else is going to? See? But it's quite obvious. I was watching the BBC television news. There was a father and son being interviewed. The son said he should go, and the father said he should say he's dividing public opinion big time. Mm -hmm. But the, the other thing as well, Jude, a couple of weeks back, the, the Brits are definitely delusional. I think it was Mark Rutter, the um, the, the Dutch uh, Prime Minister, said this absolute. Um, sort of legend being put around by the Tory MPs that Britain is leading the fight against Russia. I know that Boris Johnson is leading. It's, just, it's absolute rubbish. You know, with the money crisis, like the EU is far more involved. And I think he referred to um, Macron as being, um, being up front. And he says, this sort of delusion uh, that uh, Britain is still a world power, pulling big strings and so on and so on. So, dude, this, and I heard, them, you know, saying we're doing extremely well. The Prime Minister, dude, he, what he seems to do is 
appeal to those British, or sorry, English nationalists. He's great at selling, you know, we're world class at this and we're world class at that. Mm-hmm. And he li- he's world class at lying, but that's yeah. neither here nor there. <laughs> well, I read an article by a, a guy called Will Hutton. Uh, you may have heard yeah, of him. Yeah, former observer editor. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and he, he wrote it, he said it did, he did an interview with Hillary Clinton. And yeah. she came up with a term, I can't remember exactly what the term was, but it was essentially... Uh, personality politics. Yeah. That is to say that the personality was big enough that carried them, uh, regardless of what they were uh, so selling. Policies or policy wise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so she said Trump was an example, and, her, and Boris Johnson, and her own husband to some extent, that uh, Barack Obama to some extent, but yeah. Joe Biden, no. And uh, she said, or maybe Hutton concluded, that there was a case for Keir Starmer not being one of those and being the what people really want is somebody who's not going to play on personality, but who's very plain, straight down the middle. Yeah, so well, starters, I, 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 without question, to, to, you, to you quote yourself, you, you said you used to like uh, Boris Johnson, that he, when he came into your room, he lit up the place, he was, uh, uh, you know, he refers to everybody by their first name, everybody likes yeah, him yeah. and so on. Though I did hear a woman says the more you get to know him, the less you like him. But that's, that's, the, that's, that's, true. that's absolutely yeah. true. Yeah, but, yeah, but I want to make this clear Starmer thing to say Starmer is an example of a politi- politician who isn't projecting just his personality, he's trying yeah. to talk about uh, politics. Yeah, uh, Carmer, uh, Starmer had a charisma bypass and has obviously been very <laughs> successful, uh, you know, uh, because he has got zero personality. Well, is that, is that, that, is that, that, that a disadvantage? The wall then? I'm looking at here has more personality and maybe that's been, I'm being unfair to the wall, but Starmer just doesn't cut it. So are you saying that you have to have this personality if you're going to be successful in politics? Uh, that well, there's no uh, point in having good policies. Yeah, yeah. well, it's, it seems to be working uh, more nowadays than it did in the past. Like yeah. some of the, remember, was it Calvin Coolidge? So, uh, somebody said one time, uh, how do you know he's alive? You know, right. and he was president of America. <laughs> uh, and, 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 you know, so uh, he, he was that dull and boring. But it was all about politics and, uh, and so on. But now, yeah. Jude, it's, like we live in a world, Jude, of image. You know, everything, you know, it's That's all true. image. And it's all about, you know, how you project yourself. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I think always personality has, has played a part, but I think maybe it's playing a bigger part nowadays. Um, yeah. Anyway, I, I, I heard incidentally, just the last point on that, I heard that guy I mentioned uh, to you last day as being a sort of a neo, a neo Tony Blair, Wes yeah. Streeting. I heard him being interviewed again. You know, he sounds very impressive. He sounded right on top of his brief. I think he's a yeah. health shadow, shadow minister for yeah. health or something. But uh, he sounded very much, co- very confident, and he sounded as if he knew what he was talking about, so on. And uh, I'm, I'm given to understand that his hero is uh, Tony Blair, so you never know. It's in Italy. I wish you would have this one listed. But did you see about uh, Tony Blair's son? Yes. Wow. Wow. Hey, is hey, all hey, I can hey, say. Hold on. You and Sum Blair. Sum it up, Pat. Sum it up. 38-year-old. 30, yeah. Buys himself a 22.5 million uh, townhouse. And yeah. West London was uh, apparently it has a iceberg uh, 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 foundation on it where there's a gym, an indoor swimming pool, and a multi car parking space. Mm. He's worth north of 300 million. Mm-hmm. Isn't that a great socialist? <laughs> well, he was well brought up. He was Isn't well he? brought up. <laughs> he was found after he did his GCSEs, drunk and disorderly, in yeah. the streets of London. But he yeah. certainly come a long way from there. Actually, what he was saying was, I think, was true. He, he, his organization he set up is, I've, I've forgotten what he calls it, multiverse or something. But yeah. he's, uh, he's arguing that uh, young people are coming out, or people, young people, yes, graduates are coming out where they've done, like him, ancient history or something. Yeah. And then he got a job with Morgan Stanley, a big uh, uh, financial uh, house. And uh, he said, that, you know, the, the stuff he'd done at university was useless. He learned on the job. So um, he's, he's essentially, his organization is set up with links to all these big financiers like Morgan Stanley and all the rest of them, Price, Cooper, Waterhouse, and all the rest. Oh, yeah. And this trains these guys so that they're ready to actually do the job. So they're saying now that some people are turning their back on an offer from Oxford or, or, or Cambridge and actually going with his organization. Um, yeah. I think one part of me agrees with that. And that is to say, you uh, you could say that, well, what's the point in learning ancient Greece if you're about ancient Greek, Greek yeah. or whatever mm-hmm. history? 
if you're going to be doing financial stuff. So you can argue that's good. That's a symmetry there. Does it matches? On the other hand, I think there's a grave mistake. His father was elected on the slogan "Education, education, education, education." education. Yeah. He sounds as if he doesn't know what education is. He seems to yeah. mistake training for education, and there's a big difference. I know. I read the article. Obviously, you read because I, I, I took, but I took a slightly different. I listened to a guy on. I was Ryan Tuberty on RT about uh, six months ago. Yeah, young guy from somewhere, but Kerry set up this sort of. He said he uh, he was almost sort of. Uh, you know, put on tracks to go to university and mm. he couldn't get off. Mm. He went to university and after the first year, he, he left and he went into sort of like electrician. He says he now employs whatever it was, 10, 15 people. He says he's as happy as a pig in the proverbial. Yeah. He said, he, he says, academia was not for him. And he says, so many people in Ireland, particularly in the Republic, we have, we have one of the now the highest people, a number of people going to university and so on. And in and, and the Republic, you're a failure if you end up as a, a, a tradesman. Yet, you, I, I can speak from personal experience. Try getting a, a, a plumber. Try getting a carpenter. I left me a lawnmower in for a repair in a place up in Letterkenny the other day. Know how long I'm going to have to wait before it comes back because they're so busy. The guy says, uh, we'll give you a ring in about three weeks. Oh, jeez. Well, yeah. I, 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 That's think point, for them. I think your point, I mean, there is a shortage of um, artisans or whatever you call them, uh, tradesmen. But yeah. my point is not that the, I'm not against good tradesmen or uh, good tradespeople. Uh, yeah. My point is that what is education for? Education isn't for training people for jobs, in my opinion. It really isn't. Yeah. That's not yeah. education. That's training. Uh, yeah. And that's why they stop calling tr teacher training colleges. They stop yeah. doing that. You know, they call them something else, colleges of education or whatever. Education, yeah. And I think, I honestly think there's a really strong... But, but you, Judge, hold on a second. Are you saying, you see, I, I took it out of Barry. He was not saying, look, this is exclusive, that there's just some people can go one one way in life and uh, some people can go the other. He yeah, wasn't saying it's he, exclusive. Uh, but I think he's encouraging people to go this route. Uh, and I think I think there's dangers there, real dangers. With 10 minutes, yeah. Pat, um, yeah. I'll leave that sitting there rather than throw things. Okay, let me go on to one, one that really interests me, the four-day week. There, yeah. There's a number of uh, groups throughout Britain, I think, um, yeah. maybe Ireland as well, the South of Ireland, yeah. uh, where they're do, going to have a four-day week and uh, the people will have a three full days for the weekend. And yeah. they figure that this is going to be a good idea. Do you think it's a good idea? I mean, uh, do you know, I, do. I think the world has changed totally. I think COVID uh, was the catalyst to push it over over the hill. Jude, uh, I have seen the growth. I was in the newspaper man for years, and if one industry has changed more, and it's probably uh, a good as example as any as the, yeah. uh, the media industry, people working from home, people working from long hours, people not taking breaks. To the whole idea of you know uh, mental health, health stress. Dude, my grandfather was a farmer. He got up at, I'm sure, seven o'clock in the morning, whatever time, and had his breakfast, went out and did his whatever, milked the cows, whatever he had to do, plowed a bit of land, did whatever he had to do, come back and had his dinner, went out and did whatever. And they were out in the fresh air, out in the open and all the rest. Dude. And I'd say it was a quieter, nicer, hard life, hard work, hard, and out in all conditions. Hmm. But I, I see me, me son now, you know, that's uh, four generations. Yeah. My youngest son. I see him up at about seven o'clock in the morning with these kids. Uh, they go to school and then he start, he's on a computer at his own, in his own home. Mm. And I've gone up at half six in the evening and he's still at that computer. And dude, I don't think that's a healthy way to live. Uh, uh, the the uh, work-life balance, the whole thing about stress, about, uh, you know, burnout, about uh, about mental health pardon, and all the rest of it. That's why I think four-day week is a, actually a very good thing. And you, sh you should go out and play golf. And dude, by the way, the world has changed totally. Yeah, I think you're talking about a slightly parallel thing, this notion of working from home, although that could be combined with this. No, no but it's part of it, Jude, as uh, well. Well, as I understood it, they were saying they weren't disputing whether or not people would come into work. What they were yeah. talking about was only on four days of the week they would be working. Yeah. Uh, and I, I was scratching my head about that and saying, well, I mean, what the hell? Are we saying that people are just sloughing off and doing nothing? Yeah. Or yeah. They, And then I thought, you remember this old Parkinson's law? Uh, Parkinson's uh, law says that the job expands to fill the time yeah. available. So uh, if you've got four days to do something, you'll do it. If you have uh, five days to do something, you'll need all five. And I think uh, that's absolutely, you know that, Pat, right? The column or as an editor. Uh, uh, but you'd let me tell you someone here. Here's a true story. 
we used to have put out a, a journal, two journals a week. They were big papers, but anyway, right. On Holy Week, uh, we used to put the paper out rather than the Friday, big paper, and we used to go into Friday. We used to put out on a Thursday. And one day, the proprietor, the managing director, we went to call him, said to me, well, how come we can put a paper out uh, on, a, on a Thursday and a, uh, on a week like this? Yeah. And yet we're struggling to put one out on a Friday and, and, and so on. So I was chatting to the, the sort of foreman, the head, and they go, he says, hey, Pat, you know the, the thing is, he says, you can run a marathon, he says, once. He says, you can't run a marathon every day. He says, eventually, and it was the best example because everybody pushed and pushed to get it done early. And, you know, we, we worked over tea and work, but you can't work over tea every day and over dinner every day and all the rest. But anyway, that, that's a side issue. Too. No, but the point is, what is there's 3,300 workers involved in this. I think it's over 70 companies. Yeah. And they're going to have a look at it. And, dude, I think a lot of times, uh, if you know you're going to get uh, an extra day off, you put in more effort, you're motivated more, saying, right, I'll get this done, I'll get this done, I'll get this done, and so on. So, dude, I would be very interested because... By the way, you know the way they used to refer to the Spanish as the lazy Spanish? Yeah, Until I went yeah. to Spain, I realised the Spanish get up early in the morning. They're, they're work maybe half eight, nine o'clock. They take a break between uh, maybe uh, what is it, one and four or two and five, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. But you, you'll find them working to eight, nine o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. So uh, people can come at work different ways. That's right. Uh, well, you don't think that quality would uh, fall off, Pat? Uh, or is there a case for saying actually that you might get better product? I'll tell you the reason I say that. Sometimes when I used to write a column, I, I would have, you know, three or four, I have a full week to do it. Uh, but maybe something would happen. I'd write it and I'd lose the bloody thing on my computer or something. Uh, and I had I had maybe, you know, two hours to get it done. Uh, and I used to get it done in that time. And not only yeah. that, but very often it was better. Because you were more co more concentrated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a, yeah. a lot more energy and life in it, you know. Do you uh, find that? Uh, absolutely, Jude. Uh, uh, you know, but you see, this is aimed at helping employers and employees. Jude, if everything's done better, done more cleanly, and the work, uh, and, and th there's no loss of revenue and no loss of uh, uh, payment, Jude, I think we're going to have to have a look at uh, this whole issue of mental mm -hmm. health and mm -hmm. all the rest of it. And mm -hmm. you know, this, uh, you know, you said it was. Uh, I was talking about parallel. You're probably right. It was, but it's all part of the same thing. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of interesting because. Uh, you know, there are some people who would be just as happy to be at work and not yeah. pressured all the time, but, you know, to be able to sit and have a coffee and then go back yeah, to and, work and, uh, yeah, rather and, you know, than... Well, what, it, what, uh, the, what does they say? The water fountain moment, you know, the sitting around <laughs> the water cooler, having, yeah. a, having a, having a fa water cooler moment, having a fag and having yeah. a cup of coffee. And well, and that's a lot of that's pleasureable, you know. That's a lot of that's very, very yeah. nice. But I yeah. think that would have, a lot of that would have to go by the board if, in yeah. fact, you had your four-day week. Um, yeah. But I, it'll be interesting to see. I think all things considered, I would go with a four-day week, you know. Absolutely. It gives you more leeway for your home yeah. environment. Okay, we have four minutes left, Pat. So um, I'm just wondering, what is there anything in particular you'd like to talk about or any confession you'd like to make? Or, uh, or will I just... No, Jim, uh, I, I saw a thing, and I think you mentioned it as well this last week. I, I have seen, you know, the growth of cameras. Oh, every which surveillance. Yeah. Every, every which way. And apparently, I read the last day, or I don't know whether it's you or somebody said it, there are 770 million surveillance cameras on mm -hmm. the go. Mm -hmm. And now, I heard a guy on the radio there today, uh, uh, Gardy, there was a, a fatal accident in a place called Roth Carmick between Sligo and Donegal there yeah. yesterday. Yeah. And apparently, there was a fatal accident on the M50 on Friday. That's right. And apparently, people going by were putting their cameras. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Where, you, you know, my brother in law refuses to get a a phone, a phone because he says I am I said, not playing ball with a society where everybody knows where you are all the time and you know, all the rest and you know, I see people now even and I'm reasonably learned and I spent my time uh, with computers like me and my dear wife are trying to fill in a thing the other morning Jude on computer and could we get round some of the, the things you know even some of the, the instructions yeah. Jude, the whole world has gone I know uh, what we say camera mad well, I think they were talking, Pat, to be fair, I think they're talking largely about CCTV. That is yeah. to say, these security cameras, as I say, they have yeah. them in shopping malls, they have them in, well, uh, at a roundabout, I can think of, there's a yeah. big, beautiful one, a big high one that's uh, yeah. just sitting there. Uh, there's, four, there's four or five of them in there. You so can you're see you're being watched yeah. all the time. So yeah, the question yeah. is, is that good? You know, that would keep crime down. Or if anybody engaged in crime, there would be uh, evidence that they had done so. Yeah. Or is it... 
uh, infringing on the privacy of people like ourselves or good upstanding law-abiding people. Well, I yeah, am. Well, really. should, I, should I, I can't vouch for you. But I, I can't vouch for uh, no, and I wouldn't try either you can't. <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but Jude, there was a, one, a party that the thing came out there. Last year, there was two eager standing at a train station in Dublin, and a crowd of thugs came past and pushed them, pushed them. And, and uh, there was a train coming. Now, whether they meant to do them harm or not, I'm not quite sure, or it was just a bit of horseplay. But the bottom line of it all was those two guys or three guys were caught in them. But there was a big question mark. Wait a minute. The, these these cameras are on us all the time. So we're we're getting... So the whole thing about data protection, individual rights, no privacy and all that sort of stuff. Dude, I am all in a favor of cameras when they do good, but I'm not so sure I'm a favor of them when well, they do Maybe you haven't a choice, Pat. Maybe you haven't a choice. You have yeah, to have that's, them. That's big, you, that is the big issue. Them, you've got to take the bad with the good. Yeah, and I think that is the big issue. Would you but go the with balance, it? Actually, do, you, do you fancy getting somebody looking at you all the time? Do you fancy loving Remember the old boys that used to go up the mountain men? They used to call them during the Old West to get away from civilization. Where can we get away to? <laughs> Pat, I don't know. I think all, all things considered, I think I would go with the cameras. Um, yeah. You know, I if I was walking down a dark street, I'd feel safer if I thought there was lots of security cameras around yeah. than I yeah. would if there was nothing. Uh, yeah. Just as you would feel safer if you're with somebody, not because they were tough, but because they were yeah. sort of a link of some kind with another world. Or but I'll, I'll leave you with this, Dr. Collins. Yeah. They're saying these, these cameras don't uh, really Im impact on crime in big cities because people yeah. just put... Uh, uh, what a mask! Uh, mask a balaclava. A balaclava, and away you go. All right. Oh, I, uh, well, it, we better not say that because that'll be giving some of our viewers ideas. Uh, ideas. We don't want that. <laughs> no. Okay, Pat. Oh, Thank you very note. much. Bye, okay. See you later. Stay away from any cameras. Stay away from all uh, cameras. Uh, look out for cameras. Okay. Good luck, Jude. <laughs>